I want to talk about pain and fatigue, like body pain, headaches, aches and pains, um, somatic pain. There's lots and lots I want to share with you because in this day and age, I do believe, and me included, you know, we get pain, we want to get rid of it. And, uh, we, you know, we might reach for some kind of um, painkiller and try to get rid of that pain. But sometimes it's really helpful to tune in, you know, like if we've got pain in the neck, which, you know, I've suffered from head, neck, shoulder pain for years. And people who take a lot of responsibility seem to have a lot of somatic pain in this area, shoulders up, and it's awful. And some people will go on all sorts of medications to, you know, release and relax muscles and, you know, end up on those tablets for, for many years. So, you know, you might get a pain in the neck, but it, it could well be your body's just saying, you know, stop holding your phone in a certain position and stop reading it, you know, lying in bed at night holding the phone. I'm terrible for checking my phone lying in bed. No wonder I'm going to get a very, very sore arm, a very, very sore head or neck. And so if we can think about those kind of things, what are we doing to ourselves to make this pain come? And then there's also um, somatic stuff. So if we get a pain in the neck, it could well be that somebody is pissing us off and being a pain in the neck. Literally, I'm not, this is not a joke. We really literally can get a horrendous headache, pain in the neck, something, anything, a racing heart, anxious tummy. We could get all sorts of stuff and it can be from other people because we spent time with someone who is anxious or is stressed and we'll come away feeling all of that because we're like a sponge. We soak up their stuff and then they get up off the table and walk away and feel great. Oh, I love going for coffee with Cass because I always end up feeling so good afterwards. And then, you know, I might get up off the table. It's like, oh, blimey, I'm in agony. Because I used to soak up everyone's stuff. When we're empathic, when we are very sensitive because, well, usually because we've experienced a lot of trauma in our childhood. You know, when we have got that in incredible sensitivity towards others, we soak up their stuff, their pain, their tension, their trauma, their troubles, whatever it is that they're experiencing. So they get up and walk away fine, but we end up uh, in agony, not good. So then we might reach for painkillers. But what I'd like to suggest is that we do something different and you might like to try this. And I would encourage you to do this regularly, not just try it once, think, oh, it doesn't work, have a painkiller instead. I would like to suggest that you really attend to your body, to yourself. Listen, where have you just been? Who's, who's been texting you? Has someone upset you? Think about the circumstances and what could be coming at you. And then notice, ah, yeah, well, I didn't have a headache till that text arrived, or I didn't feel this stressed and angry until so-and-so said such and such a thing. Now, I know out there in the world, there is a, a way of being where people say, nobody can make you feel whatever. I think that's absolute bollocks. Of course, people can make us feel things. People can have a huge impact on us especially, as I say, when we're empathic, when we're sensitive. Of course, people could have a massive, massive impact from just a glance. It can just be a glance that shoots in your direction. It's like, oh, they practically slap me in the face or stab me in the back. And then you might get that pain in your back between your shoulder blades, for example. And this is tension we're picking up from others. So when people say, Nobody can make you feel da 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 da. Yes, they can. They really can. You can be with someone who just wants you to take on the weight of their stuff. And they really want that. And because you are empathic, caring, loving, 
kind, you're a good listener, that is going to soak up inside of you and it's almost like a transferring of feelings, pain, psychological stuff, uh, anger, whatever it is, it seems to just come from them and float down into us, we soak it all up, we feel like shit and they feel great. <laughs> we could put boundaries in place as well so that when we go, when we go to have coffee with whoever and we know, oh yeah, I often get a horrible headache or neck pain or oh, my shoulders are so stiff and sore when I come away from that coffee date, go there. Well, you might not want to go there. You can say no. You can say no. You don't have to go. They might be wanting to offload so that you pick up the weight of it and they feel good so you could say no and if you decide to go go there knowing that this is their stuff they've got their stuff it's their life it's up to them they can go and see a professional they could go and see Cassie and sort all that stuff out or they can carry the weight of it inside of their body but you don't have to let it come in you You could go there with a barrier, some sort of shield. Make some kind of shield. It could be see-through, it could be transparent, it could be made of steel. Whatever you need, create that in your imagination. Create the barrier. Turn your empathy down so that they, you're not really, truly, truly getting them the way you have the capacity to. And I mean, unless you're a therapist, of course, and you're being paid, that's a whole different matter altogether. We need to turn our empathy right up and we need to have a whole load of other um, skills and things in place for that. But if you're just going for a coffee date with somebody who often just offloads onto you, then you need protection. You need some kind of shield, a barrier, a shield, some kind of something that will protect you so their stuff can't get in and land inside of you and you walk around for days with a four day migraine or something. So knowing what can happen, if I choose to go and have coffee with this person, this could happen. And you know, it's, we only have one life, I believe we only have one life, you may be coming back, we're all different. But I only have one life. My life's too short for soaking up other people's stuff and being weighted down and uh, troubled by stuff. And, you know, I would like to say something else about this, actually, while it's here. Some people really do choose you because of who you are, because you're empathic. They single you out. It could be unconscious. I'm not saying that they deliberately want to harm you. But they, somehow they know when they spend time with you, they feel good. Uh, and they might just choose to throw a load of stuff at you via a text, a phone call, go for a coffee date, uh, knock on your door and come round to your house and just sit down um, and start offloading. They know they're going to get a lot from you. They're going to get a lot of relief from you. So... And, and, and I do wonder if maybe every one of us has got somebody or a few people who do like to do this to us. So I, I definitely have one. So, 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 what would I like to suggest about this? So the next time you end up with, you know, an aching neck or a bad head or, or tight shoulders or a pain in the chest or a churning stomach that's absolutely going mad like a washing machine, Initially, first of all, start with nice deep breathing. Because when we breathe out, we're breathing out toxins, we're getting rid of stuff that we don't need in our body. 
in through your nose. All the way out through your mouth until there's nothing left inside. And do that a few times to start with. And then around about four or five times of doing that, when you do the out breath, breathe out how you feel. Now, I know I've already talked about this on a different video, but that's okay. We really need to do this stuff. So when you breathe in, you breathe out all the, the stress and the pressure and the crap and the troubles that people have loaded down on you. L let it all out in whatever sound needs to come out. Just let it all out. And then do some more deep breathing in and all the way out. In and all the way out. And then, when you've done that, I then want you to turn your attention to your body. And I want you to love yourself. Get wrapped up in a blanket. Be cosy. Have a special fleece. I have a special fleece. It is my trauma blanket. For me, I wrap myself up in it. I get really cosy. I have a hot water bottle if I want one for my feet to bring me more heat. That's something that I do when I'm, you know, in this kind of pain. Somebody's landed a whole load of shit on me. And then I would like you to stroke, stroke your face. Stroke your arms, stroke your neck. When you stroke, when you're loving, just gently massage. When you do any of these kind of loving and make it full of love. Yeah, I can feel lots of goosebumps all over my body right now. Oh, that's nice. And keep breathing. And then do your arms. Do your legs. Just stroke down the front of your thighs. Stroke from your knees down your shins. If you're sitting and it's comfortable, do it. If not, just stay with your arms. You don't even need to have to move from your arms or your face or your neck. And I just want you to very gently, very lovingly, just soothe yourself. Stroke your skin. Keep breathing. Oh, that's lovely. Just keep breathing. And you can go through your hair as well, because it's I do Indian head massage. It's lovely, lovely to massage through your hair, all over your scalp. Now, while we're doing this, there's a very good reason why, why I'm suggesting this. So while you are stroking, soothing, loving yourself, while you're doing all this, you're releasing lots and lots and lots of feel-good stuff from your brain into your body, like oxytocin. Oxytocin makes us feel amazing. And that comes from touch. So if you, even if you just massage your hands, you know, get some lovely oil or some lovely cream and just massage your hands all over, in between your fingers. Massage, massage, massage your neck. Just be loving, so loving. Just release all that natural oxytocin that's going to make you feel absolutely amazing. So good. So, so good. And keep breathing in through your nose and all the way up, all, 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 all the way out through your mouth until there's nothing left inside. Keep doing that in and out, in and out. Breathe out how you feel. When that text arrives full of shit, breathe out all that toxicity out of you. You don't need that. Send the fucking text back to them. In fact, to be honest, the best thing to do is just ignore the text and take care of you. Take care of you, love yourself, 
just love yourself, release all the, all the feelings, all the stress, all the tension. Just release it, release it. Just release it all the way out. That feels really nice actually. And I wasn't in pain and I wasn't stressed when I began, but I do feel much more calmer. Um, I haven't got my Fitbit on, so I can't check my heart rate, but I'm imagining it's quite low right now. And yeah, I feel a bit sleepy. So this is another good thing to use for getting to sleep. If you're struggling to sleep, all of what I've just suggested, use it to sleep. When we breathe in through our nose and all the way out through our mouth in that way, it's like we're telling our nervous system, everything's okay in the world. Everything's okay in the world. Just because people load their stuff on you doesn't mean you have to pick it up and run with it. Leave it with them, it's theirs. You take care of you, let them take care of them. 